Hey everyone, thank you for watching. So today's video is going to be a makeup look since we are starting makeup free, of course. But I'm really excited to do this video for a couple of different reasons. This is going to be a flashback Friday video. These have been super requested uh, to do a makeup look using all flashback throwback products, products that are a little bit older in my collection, maybe I haven't reached for as much. A lot of other channels do this. Um, one of the first channels that I saw doing it was That Girl Shay. She does Throwback Thursday videos, which are really, really awesome. So I will have Shay's channel linked down below. But also, the other reason why I'm so excited to do it, because this is a collaboration video with my friend Nicole Renee Cutler. Nicole, a while back, started doing her Flashback Friday series, where she incorporates a flashback eyeshadow palette into her videos. And I have absolutely loved watching her do them and I've been noticing a lot of requests for me to do items like that myself and Nicole's name has continually been referenced in there and so I thought okay I'm gonna go ahead and do it and you know I'll give Nicole credit and all that good stuff and then I was like hey Nicole you want to do a collab with me? <laughs> and she said yes, and I was so excited. So I will have Nicole's channel, of course, linked down below. I hope that you will go check her out. She is so much fun to watch. She has so many videos. I don't know how she does it. The student, she makes a ton of YouTube videos, and then she also created Bailey's Mission. I'll have the website for Bailey's Mission listed down below, and I highly suggest you go check it out, especially if you are an animal lover like me. Nicole is doing really amazing things. So all of that will be in my description box. But today we decided that we are going to play around with the Morphe 350 palette, the original Morphe 350. So that's the eyeshadow palette that I'm going to be using in today's video. And then we're also going to be incorporating other flashback makeup products into our tutorial. And I'm super pumped for and I hope that you're excited to see some of my old school picks that I decided to use for this video. But without further ado, I'm sorry, I know that was a long intro, but I had a lot to say. But why don't we go ahead and get some makeup on this face. So I am going to start off with my eyes like I usually do. So I do have them primed and then like like I said, I'm using the original 350 palette from Morphe. So this is what the palette looks like. This was not my first palette from Morphe, but it was one that I like originally really wanted. It was just always sold out. And I remember finally getting my hands on it and I was so excited about it. They are releasing a 350 two to celebrate this being out for two years. I do plan on picking it up if I can get it when it launches and if I can I will definitely be doing reviews and tutorials and comparisons and all that fun stuff. But it does have a matte white shade in here so that's what I'm going to go in with first to kind of set my primer and act as a base and this is the Moda Metallic Super Crease Brush. I don't know why I always have to look at this brush name because I use it almost every single day. But I'm just going to go in with that first shade and just apply this all all over my lid. And I haven't done a halo eye in a while and that's kind of what I want to try to do today. I'm not the best at them but we'll give it a shot. So I'm going to come in with the shade right here. It's the third one down on the last row and I'm just going to use a small brush. This is a Morphe E18 and I'm just going to pack some product on the outer part of my eye and I'm going to start with you know not a ton of product on my brush especially because I'm using like more of a hot orange. I don't want it to be too overwhelming at first. So I'm just gonna slowly be building it up, but I just want this on the outer part of my eye. And then once I feel like I have it to where I want it, I'm also going to put that color onto the inner part of my eye and then leaving the middle of my eye blank for a different color. I like Halo Eyes because I feel like they're simple to do. They're a little bit different of a technique than I normally do, but I still feel like they are pretty simple. But for a while, I like was not being able to get the hang of it, and I swear just using smaller brushes really helped. So the smaller the brushes, usually the better for the Halo Eyes. And for the center of my lid, I want to use this shade down here, the very last one on the last row. And I'm going to use a Sigma Short Shader Brush. This is an E20. I did spray it with a little bit of Fix Plus to give it more of the metallic vibe. Ooh, that's really pretty. That looks like a penny. Ooh, I like that. So for the middle shade, I'm just packing this all along the center of the lid and again another like really small brush. I used to do this one with you know my big shader brushes like the E55 from Sigma. No, too big. Think small. Think small when you're doing a halo eye. So I'm just taking a clean brush. This is the Sigma E44. I'm just going to sweep it back and forth and see how I like it. Sometimes I add a 
crease shade after I put the first shadows down. Sometimes I don't, but I think I actually am. So I'm just gonna use the same brush here and I'm gonna grab the second color in the last row. So really we've just worked with the last row so far, but I'm gonna grab just a little bit of that second color, not too much. I'm just going to blend that into the crease. This is where I come back and look because sometimes some of the shadows can fade. So like I feel like the inner corner isn't as bright as it was. So I'm just gonna come back with that first shade and reapply. And then I'm gonna do just a little bit on the outer corner as well to make sure the shade out here didn't get blended away also. So that's another thing with Halo Eyes that I noticed. Pretty simple because I mean I've only used three shades you really only need to use two so it's pretty simple that way but after blending sometimes you just need to take your time and come back and build up any any colors that kind of got lost along the way the other eye is done I'm gonna move on into my face for my primer this is like this is my OG primer oh my goodness this is from Too Faced this is their primed and poreless primer it's a skin smoothing face primer this, I think, was one of my very first just face primers in general that I ever bought. But you guys have heard me say that Too Faced was like my original, not only high-end brand, but one of the first makeup brands that I started purchasing from on a consistent basis in the Primed and Poreless. I've gone through so many of these and like this one didn't work out for my sister the best, so she gave it to me because she knew how much I loved it. So it's just so funny, but it makes me even more sad that I just don't really love Too Faced as much these days. And sometimes when I say I don't love Too Faced, people get confused when I use their products and I, I, I get it, but all I'm saying is that I'm not currently buying from them. Um, it takes a lot for me to like completely boycott a brand or something like that because um, I don't know, I think I'm a pretty laid back, chill person. So it really does take a lot for me. And there's still a lot of like the OG products from Too Faced that I really enjoy, like the Chocolate Soleil Bronzer, the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, things like that, um, that I still really do like. But yeah, the Primed and Poreless, this was, this was like my original man. <laughs> I should probably get rid of this. It has to be really old. <laughs> then for foundation, this is one of the first foundations that I had really, really strong feelings for. This is my L'Oreal True Match Lumi. Look how used that is. Oh my goodness. And it's almost gone. Like, I mean, it is. It is almost gone. I feel like I've been using this a lot more lately because I want to use it up. I've My foundation collection has really expanded as of recently. I started getting into trying new foundations, so I want to use them up. I just, I, even though I know I'm close, like I just don't want to just throw it away with product left because I love this foundation so much. Uh, I am using a Sigma Angled Kabuki. It's the F84. I feel like the L'Oreal True Match Lumi was like, if you go back and watch my videos, even from like last year or something, like you're gonna see that foundation mentioned a lot. Cause I mean, we formed a pretty serious relationship very quickly, very quickly. Concealer, I'm gonna use another mm, mm, concealer. You know what I'm saying? This is the Maybelline Fit Me. I don't know how many Maybelline Fit Me's I've gone through, but this was one of the first concealers that I bought off of YouTube recommendations and I was like, oh my gosh, those YouTubers really know what they're talking about. <laughs> I actually almost have this completely used up, so I've been using this one a lot more too. I can feature it in an upcoming empties video. One of these days I'll get an empties video, post it. So I'm just gonna apply this to my under eyes and I didn't do any liner, so I'm just gonna kind of use the concealer to clean up the shadows as well. And I'm gonna put this on the middle of my face. I use my trusted Sephora 57 brush to blend it out. One of my absolute favorite concealer brushes. And like I said, I'm gonna use the concealer to just kind of clean up the end of the shadows right here. I don't need like a kind of blind, but you know, just to make it look a little on the cleaner side. When I was going through my collection and finding items to pull out, I found this one and I was like, why have I not reached for this in so long? This used to be an absolute favorite of mine. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Contouring Palette. Mine is in Dolce De Leche. I 
love this palette so much and I'm frustrated with myself that it's been so long since I've reached for it. I love both sides of this palette, the setting powder and the contour powder. I actually had one before this one and I broke it when I was traveling. I was so devastated I had to go out and buy another one. I mean it's went wild so it's super affordable of course but I was like wait a second. That's why I'm like so excited to do more of these videos. I really, really like, I'm so excited that Nicole said that she would collab with me on this first one because, you know, I'm kind of kicking off incorporating more flashback videos onto my channel. And I, I'm just so excited to do it with her because she's one who got me super excited. Like every time I see her post a flashback video, I get excited to see what palette she's using and what other products that she's using. Uh, so I'm just, I'm really so excited. I hope if you guys are not yet subscribed to her, that you will go check her out. I actually asked for channel recommendations a couple months back and a lot of you guys suggested her channel and that is how I found her. So thank you, I always appreciate new channel suggestions. Um, I think it's awesome. I'm using the Morphe E49 to set the concealer. Um, so really big thank you to that. So I know a lot of you already are subscribed to her but in case you are not yet, I definitely suggest that you head over to her channel. And then I just kind of use what's left over on the brush to tap the center of my face. But yeah, I'm so excited because I had a lot of fun going through my collection and finding items. And I'm like, wait a second, why haven't I used this one in so long? So this is a fun video for me. And I'm going to grab my Sigma F06 brush and I'm going to use this brush and the other side of the Wet n Wild palette to do some contour. I like this brush for contour because I feel like it gets like right up in there under the cheekbone. For bronzer, I did mention this one earlier, but this is the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. I just really enjoy it still. All these years later, I still really enjoy the Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. Um, this is the Sigma F30 brush. I've been really enjoying this for bronzer, so I'm just going to lightly bronze up the skin. And then for blush, we're taking it back to Wet n Wild again. This is the Wet n Wild Color Icon Ombre Blush. This one is in the shade Mai Tai Buy You a Drink. Oh, I was so obsessed, so obsessed with this blush when I first got it. Oh, it's just so pretty. It's like, I mean, it's ombre, it has it in, the, in its name, but it's like a really cool peachy blush. It has some beautiful shimmer to it. This is the Luxie 504 Angled Brush. I'm just going to apply and I remember I used to love this blush so much too because it has the shimmer in it. I was like, oh, it's kind of like having that highlight at the same time because I didn't understand the highlight trend for like a while. And now I'm like, give me all the highlight all over my face. See, can you see that? Sh like, man, this was, I, I really did like this blush. And I felt like it got a lot of attention too. I feel like a lot of people were chatting about this which is probably why I bought it. I mean, I bought so much off YouTube recommendations back in the day because I had no idea how to like shop for makeup. I mean, apply makeup. You know, I had no idea about any of it. YouTube legitimately taught me everything. Everything I learned was from YouTube. So before I finish off the eyes, I am going to do my brows off camera. I, I don't really have a throwback brow product, which might not be shocking if you guys have been following my channel for a while. So I'm going to do my brows off camera and then I'll come back to finish off the eyes. So I did my brows off camera. I actually did like the opposite of this video and I used a newer product to me. So I don't, I don't know. I feel like I made them very large, but who the brow by benefit. It's a little intimidating to me right now. And I did add a little bit of ColourPop and Kathleen Light's Mr. Bing liner to my waterline. So then I'm just going to come back in to finish off the eyes. I'm going to grab that first orange shade that we used. And this is the Morphe E43. It's just a flat definer brush. And I'm going to push that shade really close to the lower lash line. Then I'm going to pick up the shade that we used to blend, which is the second one. This is a Morphe M506. And I'm going to go through and sweep that on the lower lash line. I'm going to grab the second shade in the palette with my Morphe E36 and I'm going to use this for a inner corner and then also a brow bone highlight. 
I'm not gonna do lashes. I don't feel like I have a lot of like thrill back pairs of lashes. I mean, you do go through your lashes pretty quickly. And I know that I wear lashes a lot, so I try to balance it out every once in a while. But choosing a mascara was also really hard. Mascaras are something that you do need to, you know, toss fairly quickly. They expire quickly, so I go through mascaras a lot. But I found this one and I was like, I used to love the Smashbox X-rated mascara. I know this has made it into a favorites video at some point. So to finish off the face, of course, I'm going to throw it all the way back to my very first highlighter, which is the Mary Luminizer from The Balm. I recently did my highlight declutter and I mentioned in there that this was the very first highlighter that I ever purchased and it was like astounding to me the number of people that said this was their first highlighter as well. I was like, wait, what? What, what are the chances here? That was so funny. I'm going to use my Sigma F03 highlighter to... Ooh, to highlight so I thought that was so funny so I would love to know what your first highlighter was and how many more people's first highlighter was the Mary Luminizer from the ball I thought it was funny because someone commented in there and said you know my first was the Mary Luminizer too I think she was the first for many people she really got around and I was like Mary Luminizer <laughs> you naughty little thing I did not know that about you Lipstick was definitely a hard choice. I actually pulled out a few different options and I said I would decide at the end and then I still had a hard choice. But I'm going to throw it back to a ColourPop lipstick. I have had some ups and downs with the ColourPop lipsticks. I've talked about them in the past about how I feel like they have a pretty short shelf life and um, how they can go bad a lot quicker than maybe I expected. But ColourPop lipsticks, um, you know, the ultra mattes and then uh, the ultra satins after they came out with them, these are really some of my favorites. And I felt like I was really starting to able to experiment with more colors with liquid lipsticks when ColourPop released their ultra mattes because they were so affordable. I was buying, um, you know, some shades outside of my comfort zone and things like that. So um, even though they're not my favorite right now, I thought it would be fun to throw back to it. So this is an ultra satin lip and screenshot. This shade isn't necessarily like my oldest shade at all. I did declutter quite a few of my older ColourPop lipsticks when I did my most recent lipstick declutter because I think that they go bad, um, but this isn't like super new to me, so I thought that we could still make it work. Once the lips are complete, I'm going to spray my face with some of the Mario Badescu Facial Rose Water Spray. This was one of my first sprays because it was so hyped up here on YouTube. I still really do enjoy it, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and spray my face with this. So this is the final look for my first Flashback Friday video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the video and seeing some of my flashback products and the look that I created. Like I said, I hope that you will go over to Nicole's channel, check out her video, subscribe, tell her I sent you and all of that fun stuff. I was really excited that she collaborated with me on this video and I hope to be able to do some more Flashback Friday videos. I'm not a tutorial based channel and I only do a tutorial type of videos once a week and those are on Fridays so that works out well for Flashback Fridays. Uh, but because I only do one tutorial type of video a week, I'm not sure how often I'll be able to do a flashback video. Like Nicole does them almost every single Friday, which I think is awesome. Um, so I will just have to incorporate them in here and there where I can. But if you guys want to see more flashback Friday videos and if you enjoyed them, make sure to give this one a thumbs up or let me know in the comments down below because that really does help me out. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I hope that you will also consider subscribing before you go. And I will catch you guys on Sunday for my next video. Bye.